All right, so we got a piece of cardboard here. I'll be nothing under there. Nope. Oh well. What's this over here though? Let's check this out. A nice uh, burrow right here. Look at that. That's a big one too. Could be a woodchuck. And there's foxes around here too, so maybe a fox lives in there. I'm looking for some bones scattered around. I don't see any, so. Woodchuck is probably where it is. Oh, but wait. Feathers. Alright, so yeah. This could very well be a, a fox den with these feathers right here. Now, these are, prob these are probably chicken feathers. My neighbor uh, had a chicken die a couple months back. And they buried it in their backyard, but something dug it up. And then another neighbor said they saw a fox carrying a chicken. And they were worried it was one of mine, but all my chickens are black. And they said this was a white chicken. So, yeah. Some detective work would suggest that this is a fox den. A little bit of a, some water here. That's always a good sign. You might find something. Frog just jumped in over there. So, there. A herp. <laughs> Maybe you heard the plop, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I'm filming with my phone today because if you watched my last video, you'll know that the lens on my camera broke. And I actually got a new camera, but it was just some cheap piece of shit, to be honest. It was about 65 bucks on Amazon, but I figured why not give it a shot. You can always send it back. And send it back. I did. That thing was awful. <laughs> it was worse than my phone. It was worse than my VHS camcorder I had back in uh, the so, 90s. I got rid of that thing. There were a lot of good reviews on it, so that was what was misleading to me. But all those reviews were probably left by uh, folks that haven't used a video camera since the 90s. Here, here's a deer track. Going back to my camera situation. I decided to just replace the lens I broke because even though that camera is not great to film with, uh, it does it does take good quality film. Here's another now burrow right there. Um, so you see, even though you live like in a developed uh, agricultural area, there's still there's still stuff to come out here and find. Uh, I miss rocks. In New York, there were all kinds of rocks and creek beds and stuff that you could get into. Uh, lots of big slabs of slate. Shale. And that was always good for finding snakes and salamanders. Around here, there's no rocks. It's just, just wood. Seriously, no rocks. There's not even dirt, really. It's, I mean, you got this leaf layer, you know, on the forest floor, and there's a little layer of dirt there, but it's all sand, man. It's all sand under there. Tricker bushes. Oh my gosh! Should not have worn shorts. But it's so hot. The pieces like this, you'd think. You could flip. That is a blue jay feather. You'd think you could. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. Yeah. Redback salamander. Lead phase. And I'm going to gently put that down. And that's about all I've found in this little patch of wood so far. Are these little salamanders. Which, yeah, cool. Better than nothing. Since moving to Maryland, the literally the only uh, salamander I have found are redbacks. On, uh, on the eastern shore of Maryland, there's just not a lot of salamanders. Again, probably because it's warm and sandy. And speaking of things I missed, I missed the rocks, but I also really miss my salamanders, especially the spotted salamanders who 
well, are up in New York right now. They're doing their spawning thing, and I'm missing it. What they do have around here that I have yet to find are marbled salamanders. And I would love to find a marble salamander. That would make up for the lack of spotted. If I could find marbled salamanders. Well, nothing terribly exciting, but that is a tiny redback salamander, so I had to show it to you guys. That was that might be one of the smallest ones I've ever found. He's just a baby. And that actually makes four redback salamanders. And that's it so far. So at least there's something in here, but Ah, oh, I kind of take them for granted, I'll be honest. Redback salamanders are... There's that... Oh, man, that squirrel startled me. I don't know what he's doing. There's a squirrel over there. He just keeps freaking me out. Like, when I least expect it, I just hear him, like, running through the leaves. Nope. There's two more. That's... Uh, six? Six of them. I'm gonna cross. I don't want to jump. Walk across. Hmm. I'm getting too old to walk across logs. <laughs> Not really, but I do have my camera and phone. I don't really want to fall in and I already broke a lens, people. So let's not push my luck. I could use that log. I'll do it. Yard essentially, so I better disappear into the wilderness. This is pretty gruesome. Check this out. What we have here are feathers from a wow, prickers. Let me get around from a bird that was killed and eaten, probably by a Cooper's or Sharpshin hawk. And I can even tell you what species it is because we have the head. And that is a um, red-bellied woodpecker. And that's what we've got here. Red-bellied woodpecker. Beautiful feathers. Look at this one with the spots on it. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Beautiful. There's another one. Now, of course, in the United States, it's illegal to keep songbird feathers, so these ones will just have to sit and stay here. But my goodness, that was a pretty look bird. Look at that. Just when I was going to call it quits and head on in, I decided to flip these pieces of rock that are by this dank pond that I got, and I found a snake. So I went searching through all those woods, flipping logs, cutting myself in pricker bushes, and then the snake turns out to be right in my own backyard. Now it's a Eastern Garter snake, and ouch, he doesn't like me at all. <laughs> Alright. He's gonna go in the water. Uh, and he got me. <laughs> a couple times. But that was pretty cool to find him. And I'm gonna flip this rock. Because usually there's a lizard under there. Let's find out. Mm, nope. Not today. Maybe underneath this one. Yep, there we go. There we go. We got a five line skink. So, turns out I didn't have to go far to find reptiles. But it was still a pretty cool walk anyway. And now I have a video for you. So how about that? Well, I guess the herpin' ain't over, folks. Look at this. Look at that. I came out here to put my chickens away for the night. <clears throat> and uh, it rained, as they said it would. Or it's raining. And we got our first little spadefoot toad. And man, I wish I had my 
camera. Oh, got my boot. I wish I had my good camera working. Because then I can make a better video for you, but that's not bad. Let's go, uh, chickens away. There they are. Chickens. And the turkey. And we're gonna shut them in so predators don't get them. All right, so the chickens are away. Now I gotta collect the quail eggs. There we go. Yeah, you guys didn't know I had all these quail, did ya? But now, last time I made a video with the, about quail. I only had one of them. That white one right over there. Gadnuck. And I have gotten a lot more quail since then. And maybe one of these days I'll make a video about it. Yeah. There's Gadnuck. There's a there's an opening right there, buddy. You could have just... Right oh, whatever. Let's right. take a look at them. There they are. Yeah, it looks like they could use some food, too. So I guess I'll feed them. But yeah, I guess that about does it for this video. Not a bad haul. Seven redback salamanders, a garter snake, a skink, and a spadefoot toad all right in my backyard. Didn't have to drive anywhere, so can't complain about that. All common stuff around here, but good enough to make all a video. In and there's a second little spadefoot. These little guys must be from last spring, which I made a video about back then. These must be the young from back then, from back last May, I think. I have to go back and look. I bet you there's another one. Yep, there's one. We get a lot of these spadefoot toads around here, which is pretty cool. We didn't have these when I lived in New York.